Welcome back to Legends with Durka, where spring is in full swing. We have a brand new update cycle coming to Legends that is going to include a lot of new content. The campaign ship? Destroyer USS Somers. Accompanied with the full Italian Tech Tree Battleship line, including Vittorio Veneto at Tier 7, there will be new guises, buffs, nerfs, and some exciting miscellaneous changes that I am eager to share with you. And finally, Soviet carriers will be coming to the game with their skip bombers at tiers 5 and 7. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. New ships first. For starters, let's take a look at the Summers, which is going to be at the end of a five-week campaign called Gold Runner. Summers will have eight rapid-fire 127mm guns. They will be in a double turret, kind of like the gearing. After doing some research on the PC version of the game, though, it seems that their reload will be significantly longer than gearing. Summers also gets those gearing torpedoes, but in a 3x4 configuration. So two more torps total, as well as being a lot more effective and being able to launch them either in three different directions or to triple stack them on bow end targets. So that is going to be a pretty powerful component and they should reach the 16.5 kilometers that we are used to from gearing. Somers also has a pretty saucy top speed at 38.6 knots. Other new ships are going to include the Vittorio Veneto, the Tier 7 Tech Tree Italian Battleship. And that is what is inspiring our background footage today. Her Tier 6 counterpart has been a blast to play, and I'm very excited for a Veneto. This ship will also have SAP secondaries and an exhaust smoke consumable. Nine 15 inch guns, like we're used to on the Roma. However, I think Roma will maintain a better accuracy and better gun performance with that main battery than Veneto will have, and that's kind of what will keep Roma relevant. Definitely, probably this is the part of the update I am most excited for, as the Francesco at Tier 6 has been an absolute blast to play. So stand by for a video on Veneto early next week. Full well, secondaries, of course. Other new ships include the Tiger 59. This will be a British light cruiser. Picture a Belfast with radar smoke and two Minotaur turrets, one on the bow, one on the stern. Super high rate of fire and short fused Brit AP only. The ship is also supposed to have great maneuverability. Sounds like an interesting ship that could be good at a lot of different things. In addition, we will be getting the USS Hill at tier six. This is another American destroyer. Five fast reloading 127 millimeter guns like the Benson and Mahan. Good agility with a decent top speed, long lasting American smoke, and the torpedo armament layout is pretty unique. It will have three by three launchers. One will be in the middle, kind of like the Mahan, and then the other two on either side of the ship. And the last of the new ships that we can expect in this update are three new Soviet carriers. Of course, I'm going to hold my judgment until we get some playing time with them and see how they are. At tier three, we have the Komsolets, tier five, the Serov, and finally, the Pobita at Tier 7. Tiers 5 and 7 will have the Skip Bombers. Tier 3 will just have normal HE bombs, I believe. Skip Bombs are exactly what they sound like. The bombs can be released before the target ship and essentially bounce on the water to hit the broadside of a ship. Other characteristics of these carriers that kind of set them apart from the other nations. When you send in an attack squadron, all of the planes in that squadron attack at a single time. So I'm picturing six or seven planes attacking at a single time, releasing all of their ordnance at once. The planes, they do not have the best health and they are also kind of slow. Now, Pobita does make up for this slow speed a little with jet assisted takeoff. They can be helmed by a new commander that you could buy outright for 900,000 blue XP or commander XP, or simply do the free mission to earn him. 
Miscellaneous things coming. There will be a new guise for American and British ships, Brady McMordoff. I am assuming green tracers for shells. Uh, I think that could look pretty cool. Green camos are also coming back, including for the Tiger 59, the new British cruiser we just talked about. Uh, Belfast will be back in the store, as well as the pot of gold crates, if you remember from last year, that come with a guaranteed 1,250 doubloons each, but they can also drop other items as well. In other news, champagne will be available for Global XP. Now on to the ship buffs and nerfs. There are a lot of balance changes surrounding the carriers. Wargaming states, it's only natural that with new carriers incoming, the existing ones are getting tweaked a little bit. The balancing logic is very simple this time. The carriers that were changed ended up lagging a bit behind their peers, so we're giving them a much needed boost. You might consider the Chicago buff to be a bit conservative, but let's see what happens. While it's widely believed that high tier carriers lack in damage and earnings, they actually beat battleships in that regard, with the caveat of battleships being a much more popular ship type. That being said, we're boosting tier 3 and 7 credit earning modifiers by a few percent to make the ships a little more attractive to those who normally avoid them. So, the American tier 3 Langley. The Torpedo and Dive Bomber damage is going to increase, as well as the speed of these bombers by 10 knots. Okay, the Japanese Tier 7 Chicago. The big thing to note here is that your dive bombers are going to go from 10 kilometer detection to 7.5. The British Tier 3 Hermes is going to get a big buff to the bomb damage, nearly 800, as well as to the torpedo damage. So all around, this ship's getting a pretty good buff. Now, the Parcevel. Damage from both dive and torpedo bombers is reduced by 5%. Now, along with the carriers, two of our destroyers are getting some changes. The Minsk Soviet Tier 6 destroyer, the reload is being decreased by half a second, and the torpedo reload is also getting decreased. Basically, the last buff that I think it got uh, overcooked it just a little bit. The Shenyang Tier 7 Pan Asian destroyer, torpedo range is getting increased to 10.1 kilometers, and the damage is going from 17,000 to 18,000 for the upgraded torpedoes. Okay, so the cool parts. The parts that I'm probably most excited for besides Vittorio Veneto. And that is you can now set a priority target for your secondary armament. As well as turn your AA guns on or off. So, one, the secondary armament. We've been playing a lot of Brandenburg recently. And sometimes it would be very handy to be able to target which ship your secondaries are focusing on. So now we'll have the ability to do that using the comm wheel. Wargaming states, to do that, go to your quick commands wheel and use the appropriate buttons depicted on the right. Now this will also be the same for turning AA guns on and off, which will be very handy as carriers can often hunt destroyers simply by the tracers from the AA gun. So if you turn this off, it would be harder for carriers to hunt you down and to kill you. Okay, and then finally a couple bug fixes. The Xbox Series X now supports ray traced shadows. You'll most likely see the improvements when looking at ships smaller details. To make sure ray tracing is on, you have to run the game at 4K and enable RT support on your console. So I'm pretty excited about that. Anything that brings a visual improvement to the game, heck yes, I'm all for it. The HUD minimap is now higher resolution and has brighter object borders. Unspent winter coins will be converted into credits at the exchange rate of one winter coin for 1500 credits. Visual improvements have been made to the water on the following maps, islands, big race, polar. And the map borders were tweaked for the domination mode on Sea of Fortane, Warrior's Path, and Northern Waters. So overall, a pretty good amount of buffs and new things coming to the game. We'll try to get some of the ships tested and get videos out on those for you guys, but I am really excited to see the ray tracing and to see the old Vittorio Veneto secondary build in action. So stay tuned for that. If you do me a huge favor, be sure to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future content. And with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.